Super fresh deer trap, mate. Super fresh. Buddies, pals, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. It's opening day. I remember saying that I wasn't going to fish opening day this year, but um, well, I caved basically. Uh, the weather forecast is pretty good, which is pretty unusual for this time of year. Normally, opening day sucks. Forecast is for low wind, some sun, it's a, just a pleasant day. So I thought, ah, screw it, I'll come out. And to be honest with you, um, I need to get moving, I need to get hustling. It's less than a month until I head to the South Island for South Island Dara 6, which I'm pretty pumped about. And as much as I've been training over winter to put on some muscle, keep in shape, keep strong, rehab my knee, that kind of stuff, you just can't get fit for this kind of stuff unless you're doing this kind of stuff. As much as today is about going for a fish in the backcountry, it's just as much about conditioning and uh, yeah, just trying to get as in shape as I can for summer. We've got some cool stuff to do guys, so <sighs> gotta hustle, gotta move, gotta groove, gotta get fit, gotta get strong. So I'm about an hour into my walk into this river. I don't think I've fished this section of the river for a couple of seasons now. I don't think I fished it last season. So it'll be interesting to see what it's looking like and uh, how it's fared over the last couple of years. Got about another 30 or 40 minutes until I hit the river and I'll uh, yeah. check back in with you then. Let's get to it. There she is, people. There she is. Cool. Looks good. Looks good. But we're here, we're in. And I'm gonna have a little bite to eat. I'm gonna change out of this t-shirt because it's a bit sweaty. And put my thermal on because it's once you stop moving and you get in here, it gets cold pretty quick. So I always like to always like to walk in in like a t-shirt and then have something in my bag, dry and warm to change into. So that's my plan now. Um, to be somewhere in my bag. Oh, so good. Such a good idea to bring other clothes to change into once you get here, because uh, yeah, I was already starting to get cold just after like a couple of minutes of just not moving. Let's set up. So I'm gonna run you through my setup today because, well, it's a little bit different to what I've been using for the last couple of months. I've got two rods with me. I've got Frank. Where's the rest of Frank? Oh, whoo -hoo. Uh, whoo. Uh, I've got Frank, which if you don't know, is the Helios 3 5 weight F, and my backup rod is the uh, 5 weight D, Papa Smurf and Frank, so that's what we got. Hopefully, we'll be doing some dry droppery stuff, and at most, some light nymphing. Very different to what I've been doing for the last three months. And then, whoo. I'm gonna bring the burnt orange guy out. So on here, this is the Mirage LT, burnt orange. On here is a Scientific Angler's Infinity Smooth five weight line. And then on the end of that there is a floating poly leader, seven foot floating poly leader. Uh, this is one of the Orvis ones uh, to a tippet ring. And then I will build my leader off that tippet ring as long as I wanna make it. It's always weird throwing light stuff around after winter. We've just been water loading and roll casting big nymphs and split shot and indicators and stuff like that. So always a bit heavy handed to start with on a new season. Poly leader, there's my tippet ring there. All right, so I'm gonna build, I don't know, a seven foot, oh, about five feet of three X and a couple of feet of four X off of that. And we'll uh, start with that. Scientific Angler's uh, absolute supreme fluoro is what I use now. It's, yeah, it's, it's great stuff, it's so good. And we'll go about five feet. 
or just under because I just ran out of 3x. Oh, that's five feet bang on. How about that? A couple of feet of 4x, then I use a blood knot to attach my 4x to my 3x. And then what I'm going to do just for now is I'm just going to put a transport fly on because, um, well, I don't know what I'm going to find. So we'll just get something going and then see what happens. I'm going to put a size 12 Royal Wolf on, tag ends in the hip pack. Crush this barb, so it's done. Yeah, good to go. Tag ends hip pack. Okay, so I'm gonna go fairly long, maybe three and a half feet, four feet under there. Just because it's fairly deep out there. And I'm just going to go flash crack pheasant tail, old faithful, nothing too crazy. Okay, a little bit of lube. Here we go. Alright, first cast of the season. Just going right through the middle of that deeper stuff. Can't see out there, but I'm just going to cover it. Again, I'm not, I should really be nymphing that stuff, I would say. But that's all right, just, I'll just put some through. Got him. There is a fish. Just up there at the top on the inside there. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, whoa. Dude. Oh, gone. Oh. No way! Just popped off. That's dumb. Just uh, yeah. That's why you crush your barbs, people. That's why you crush your barbs. Now I did see a fish just scoot across that white sand, but I've lost him now. In that darker stuff. So I think I'm just gonna fish it from below and see what see what happens. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, wow, he went around that rock. Jesus. Oh, I should have lost that fish. He just went 360 around that rock. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, dude, you're a tank. No, 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 no. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Ah, oh, jeez. That fish is up. Set. It's coming back up the rapids now. Back down the rapids, up the rapids. Where are you going? Come on, bro. I think we're going to go down, eh? That's all right, that's all right. Down here's good. Oof. Not in control yet, eh? Hey, just basically just following him down the river. Her down the river. That was a good fish. <sighs> and the hook just popped. Oh, that stings. It was a really good fish. Uh, hooked it just the other side of that rock. And she would have 360 around the rock and went back down there where I should have lost her, really. And then she went back up into there, jumped a few times, came back down into this rapids behind me, uh, up and down in there. Then we dropped down to the next piece of water. Just as I thought things were starting to calm down a bit, hook popped. Just popped out. Just one of those things. Oh, I would like to have... That would have been a great first fish. It's a good five pound fish. Oh. oh, I'll fish the top and keep going. Third time lucky, eh? Third time lucky.
see, I did not see that fish. That's a good fish too. It's okay, let's see if we can make this one stick. I don't like you over there. On the side of that rock. Okay, yeah, we can do this down here. It's fine. Got no say in this yet. Come on, bro. Dude. Nope, 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 nope. Oof, there we go. Oh, he was burying his head in that big old tree root there. Uh. Come on. Yeah. Oh. On the board. Woo. All right. All right, got it done. Drop those first two fish, fished real clumsily, and then obviously spooked the other fish in that, in that previous pool. I may have screwed this, screwed it up. That fish might be gone. And then I couldn't actually see anything up through here, so I was just kind of working my way up that piece of water because it looked good. And uh, yeah, and she was just sitting on that inside edge. Whew. All right, first backcountry fish of the season. Stoked with that. Happy, happy, happy. And uh, yeah, took the little pheasant tail. It swam off strong. Always good to see. It becomes apparent very quickly just how lazy you get fishing over winter, because you can get away with so much more. Uh, you can make mistakes, you can be clumsy, you can kind of fish badly and get away with it and still catch fish. Bit of a different game out here because, well, they just, just can't afford to do it. So you've got to slow down, fish better, and just, just be better, really, or well, you won't catch them. All right, let's see if we can find another one. Just before I go, I'm just gonna fish the rest of this real quick before I put my pack back on. Oh, no way, no way. Just as I was lifting up, I saw that fish drop back and eat my fly. <laughs> and head up, head up, head up, head up, head up. Oh, sweet. Oh, wow. Okay, so that was literally like my first first drift and at the end of the drift, just as I was lifting up to recast, I saw that fish drop back and he ate the fly as I was lifting it. And um, for a second I thought it was the same fish, but it wasn't, it was a boy. Uh, how cool was that jaw? Hopefully it came out. Uh, I didn't get the big camera out because I literally just put everything back in my bag. So did it on the GoPro. Hopefully it did him justice. This cool jaw with this kind of big nodule on the end. Which is quite um, characteristic of fish in this river. I'm not sure what it's from, maybe, maybe like rooting around in the rocks or, or something like that, I'm not too sure, but cool fish, cool fish. Right, I'm gonna fish the rest of that and then go somewhere else. Yep, nice. It's another good fish. So, come on, just trying to keep that side strain on. Just trying to ease him out of that flow. As long as he's got his head down and into that flow. 
kind of got the upper hand on me to be honest. Come on bro, come on bro. Dude, that head up. That's it, that's it. Oh no, 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 no. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Man, these fish are strong. Healthy. That's it, that's it. That's a nice fish, man. You're good. Good, good fish. Really want you in here. That's it. Oh, nope. That's it. Up, up, up. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Gee. Come here. Oh. Whew. Dude, what a fight. That just, that was such a good fish. No wonder I was having so much trouble actually trying to get him in. It was in just such good condition. It's just so strong. And despite the amount of hassle he gave me and how hard he fought, he swam off super strong. And really do believe this because the whole time I was doing what I was doing, I had him fully submerged, upright, in the water, in the net, breathing, recovering, and just chilling, and just not getting any more stressed than he already was. So like, I think it's, it's such a huge thing. Just prioritize keeping that fish in the water, upright, fully submerged, so it can recover while you're messing around, doing whatever you're doing, especially if you're gonna get a picture or, or, or a bit of video or whatever. Just keep them in the water. And even if you're not, after a big fight like that, just, just let them chill, just let them recover a bit before you let them swim away. And when, when you are keeping the fish out of the water for whatever reason, whether it's unhooking or getting a picture or getting a video, just think about how long he's out of the water for. Like I try not to keep him out of the water for longer than like four or five seconds. I kind of count in my head when I have a fish out of the water because it's super important. I'm going to leave a video up here that you should definitely check out if you haven't already. And if you have, just watch it again. Just, you know, it's the beginning of the season. Just kind of keep things like that fresh in your mind when you're dealing with fish because we want them to go back, we want them to survive, we want them to have as little impact on them as possible. All right, I'll stop talking now. I'm gonna leave this bit of water alone. There's three great fish out of a tiny piece of water. I'm stoked. So we'll uh, get cracking. Let's do it.
thought that was just sinking. <laughs> oh, it just kind of. Uh, I didn't really catch that fish. Not really. It wasn't good angling that got that. That was just, yeah, right place, right time kind of fish. Oh, come on, Nick. Come here. Come this quick. Oh. Nice. All right, I'm just going to give this a quick show before we go. Boom. Beauty, eh? See you, lady. and a, like a yearling maybe, just having a feed on the clearing up there in front of me. Well, I didn't see the yearling, but I saw, I saw the mum and I managed to get my camera out, put the long lens on, and then just as I was trying to zoom in and focus, there she was, you hear that? That's her just barking at me. Oh, oh. Telling everyone that uh, there's a human around. But yeah, just as I was zooming in, she got wind of me and they, and they bolted. Uh, but that was awesome, that was awesome very rare I see deer that was her yeah she's gone up <clears throat> she's gone up there and she's moving around this hill there she is I can see her and she's looking at me she's right up on the hill I don't think you'll be able to see her on this camera because the lens is so wide, but yeah, they just climbed up the hill and stopped and looked down at me. That was awesome. Oh, that was cool. It was worth coming out today just for that. That's oh, brilliant. This is the clearing they were in, having a feed. I mean, obviously, it's such a good place to have a munch. Good bit of grass around, some sun, warm up. Lots of deer poop around. That's pretty fresh, it's real shiny. Yeah, she was right about here. And they boosted up up there and then came around this side. And they've gone up probably over that ridge. A long way away from me now. All right, I'm gonna have some lunch here. Definitely time for some cheese and salami. <laughs> <laughs>